I wanted to show a typical robotic procedure with the DaVinci SP system. This is a robot assisted laparoscopic pyeloplasty. This is a child who presented to us after traumatic laceration of the right ureteral pelvic junction. And he had had a ureteral stent in for a very, very long time. This is a CT scan showing the uh, right sided uh, severely hydronephronic kidney and proximal ureter just at the, the point of the laceration. This is a MAG3 scan performed with the ureteral stent in place, just showing good function of the right kidney. And finally, this is a right retrograde ureteral pilogram showing an abrupt uh, end to the contrast progressing from distal to proximal, and then some contrast that made it into the renal pelvis. That was the defect, the distance between the most proximal aspect of that contrast and then the renal pelvis contrast. You can see the wire going all the way into the kidney. Just uh, I want to point out that that kind of cobblestone appearance of the distal and mid ureter, I think, is just a result of very long term indwelling stent use. This is the typical position I use for a young patient during a robotic procedure um, in the flank. This is a photograph of our trocar placement. So I used a five millimeter air seal port directly through the umbilicus to hide the incision. And then we used the Da Vinci SP trocar through a mini gel port to help air dock, uh, so to speak, and gain distance between the trocar and the target anatomy. This is necessary with the Da Vinci SP system, uh, sometimes when operating on, on young kids. This is just an example of my resident uh, bringing the uh, robot and docking it to the trocar. This is adjusting the robotic arm. And then finally, this is our uh, setup with the camera and instruments through the cannula. Just another shot of the overall setup. And when you look with the camera and you bring the instruments in, this is what you see. So these are introducing and fanning out the right, left, and the inferior arm. In this situation, the camera is at the 12 o'clock position. And these instruments are at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position. First thing we do is reflect the colon along the white line to expose the retroperitoneum, the ureter, and the kidney. And one thing that I should point out now is that you're going to notice that this case is a lot more oozy than typical. And I think it's because of not only how the um, injury occurred, but also just the long-term development of inflammation and duration from the uh, foreign bodies of the ureteral stent. This is dissecting circumferentially around the ureter and now cleaning the posterior aspect of the renal pelvis. I do use a little bit more electrosurgery uh, in this surgery than normal, simply to try to minimize ooziness. You can see the area of the UPJ right there that's strictured and narrowed, as I typically do with a robot-assisted laparoscopic pyeloplasty. I bring in a hit stitch just to stabilize the renal pelvis and make uh, the, the dissection, the dismemberment, and the anastomosis a little bit easier. This is hiking up the renal pelvis, and you can see, uh, again, how um, kind of irregular um, the renal pelvis and proximal ureter look. This is just marking out the anticipated diamond-shaped dismemberment and then dismembering the renal pelvis and proximal ureter. Now, there was a substantial inflammatory rind surrounding the ureter, and so we had to um, cut down to the ureter for quite some distance to actually reach ureteral tissue. barely inside the ureter there. Now opening it up. Still can't see the stent. That's how narrow this kind of structured and injured segment was. There's the ureteral stent that had, had been previously placed. And you can see how narrow, tight, stenotic that ureteral pelvic junction is. So we cleaned off the renal pelvis opened this to an area that was much more widely capacious.
and more suitable for an anastomosis. Again, there's thick inflammatory rind around this tissue. That's why it looks so, so thick and why it's oozing more than typical. This was passed off and uh, discarded. Now we're spatulating the proximal aspect of the ureter, cutting through the strictured segment to a portion of the ureter that appears normal and healthy. Had to spatulate this for some distance to be able to reach a healthy tissue. This is bringing in a five millimeter laparoscopic instrument. In this case, it's a Maryland that I'm directing down the ureter just to be certain that this area of the ureter is widely open. There's no other strictured tissue. This is just peristalsis. This is placement of the initial anastomotic sutures. In this case, I'm using 5-0 um, absorbable suture. I usually use 6-0 monocryl. In this case, I'm using 5-0 PDS. Just given the inflammatory nature, I want to make sure that this stitching material lasts a little bit longer. In this case, I, I used two anchoring sutures right at the apex. Usually I use one. But in this case, just given the inflammatory nature of the tissue, I placed one on the immediate right and left side of the, the ureteral spatulation apex. As is typical, I like to bring in um, several sutures and just uh, build the initial parts of this anastomosis and make it a little bit more sturdy and robust before I manipulate the stent. This is redirecting the stent back inside the renal pelvis. And now the excess ureteral tissue that's strictured and diseased can be removed and passed off and discarded and the remainder of the anastomosis can be completed. Again, there's different ways to do this. My strong preference is to complete all of the uh, anastomosis in a pyeloplasty with interrupted sutures. I just feel that that um, provides a little bit more stability and uh, insurance to the anastomosis. I worry about running suture lines in that if one uh, suture pops out or rips through tissue, the uh, entire suture line then becomes compromised. In this case, there's multiple sutures that all provide their own integrity to the anastomosis. You can see that the anastomosis is dependent. The renal pelvis and ureter have good color. The ureter is not twisted or kinked. Um, it's not on tension and it appears very medial, which are all characteristics that you want in a reconstructed ureteral pelvic junction. Finally, bringing the instruments back in, this is the cosmetic appearance of the incisions immediately after the procedure. And finally, I need to give credit to my surgical team that took on this, this task of learning the SP system and performing this surgery in a very safe way. This is my nurse on my right, this is my tech on my left, and on my far left, my resident. And all these individuals took great pride in learning and practicing the Da Vinci SP robot for this one particular procedure, which was the first procedure that we did uh, at University of Florida on the Da Vinci SP system.